make dua, one of three things will happen. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you what you want in the dunya, or he won't give you that thing, but he'll give you something better. And sometimes we don't know that what he's given us is better because Allah is al-hakim, he is wise. Allah has ilm mutlaq. He is omniscient, he knows the future, but we don't know that. So we complain if we don't get exactly what we want. Or this also entails that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deprive you of something, but by depriving you of that thing, he averts you from a musibah that could have destroyed you. Or the third thing will happen, which is the best, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't give you anything in the dunya, but on the yawm al-qiyamah, you'll see the reward of that dua in the form of jibal, mountains. And people will see these mountains and they will wish, I wish, I, I wish that Allah never accepted a single one of mine, a di'iyah in the dunya, because I could have these mountains. So the akhirah is better. The afterlife is better than the, the present. Ibn Ata'illah, he said, if Allah gave you the treasure of being able to make dua, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the treasure of being able to make dua, he said, even raising your hands to him, then know that he'll give you whatever you ask him. Right? Of course, with the condition that you have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim ibn Adham was a little more strict. He was uh, a great zahid from the tabi'een. His students came to him and said, why doesn't Allah answer our prayers? And he says, you read the Quran, but you don't implement it. You claim to love Allah, but you don't implement the injunctions. You claim to love the Prophet ﷺ, but you don't follow him. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer your dua? You don't follow the Habib of Allah. You're asking Allah for things, but you don't follow his Habib, his beloved. How can Allah answer your dua? I remember back in the, the day, as they say, I used to play a little flag football. And we were in a flag football league. And the league was basically all Muslim. and. Uh, and uh, we got to the championship game one year. And so our team and the, and the team were going to play. We prayed Asr together. And everyone was there praying Asr. And after Asr, people were making dua. I'm like, well, mashallah, They're very religious people here. And then we, pray the we, we played the championship game. And my team lost. And now it's Maghrib time. And almost everyone from my team is walking away. And the other team is praying Maghrib. So I asked one of my teammates, <laughs> I said, where are you going? Didn't you pray Asr? And he said, we lost the game. This was his response. I said, what? And he said, yeah, in my dua after Asr, I asked Allah to give us victory. He didn't. Why should I pray to him? This was his response. SubhanAllah. I said, yeah, with an attitude like that, no wonder why we lost the game.